You are a unique person in this world. Your story is unique. Your footsteps are unique. The truth is not out there. It is here, it's inside you. Are you willing to seek it? And once you find it, are you strong enough to live it? Life can get quite difficult. If we're managing family, we're managing a business, we're managing ourselves. Where does one fit into that? How do we walk in the world? There's so much that wants a piece of us and we forget how to connect back into that internal space. And Vedic meditation has given me that, where I can easily locate quietness, stillness within myself. And I can be in the world, but I'm not getting lost by it, that I lose aspect of my true self. My name is Karma Dos Santos, a Vedic meditation teacher. I specialize in stress management and conscious development. And I'm a partner, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I'm a business owner. I've been teaching for about 12 years. I have learnt myself over 25 years. It's actually been a long journey. There was a time in my life where I was really struggling. I was really at a place where I was quite distressed. Um, I was juggling being a young mum. Um, I was running a business as well and it was just too much, like I was just overwhelmed. I felt lost. And I was in a relationship that um, wasn't going well. I wanted to feel more than just going through actions. It's that, you know, being more in life than actually just doing. A friend introduced me to Vedic meditation. It just spoke, it spoke to my heart. It's a profound meditation technique that takes you into a much deeper level of quietness and stillness within yourself. I often like to talk about it as a journey home. On that journey of life, I realized that that's actually all within myself. And I just had to do the work to uncover that, to sit in it, to be it. The first thing that it gave me was that sense of, I can breathe and I can feel at ease. When I was able to go within myself and sit there, that started to give me the ability to, to see what wasn't working for me. And finding the courage to make those changes. Sometimes we want to make changes, but we don't feel that we've got the strength, we don't feel we've got the courage. Courage comes from the ability to let go, to surrender. The, when we're trying to grasp onto something so hard sometimes, it's suffocating. When we let go and surrender, then this life force starts to come through us. In Vedic terms, we refer to it as prana. Prana is life force that is making us move in a certain direction, it gives us life that breathes. And if life force is not flowing, we're not gonna feel the pull to be out in the world easily. My own experience with meditation has been a direct experience. I can see how it's helped me to be in the world. I realized that others were having experiences that I was having before, that distress, that um, you know disconnection, all of that. And I was starting to hear the same patterns and they started to realize things have changed for me. And they asked, you know, what is it that you're doing? You know, what is different? And I just started to share what I was actually experiencing. It became so strong within me that if I could have this experience and I could feel this within myself, then I know others would love to experience this as well. And so that's what started to happen naturally. It became a choice of I can't do anything else but teach actually so it was almost like a calling I love sitting with people I love hearing their story I actually start to see them become present you know I've had some beautiful feedback where the one meditator said she actually could breathe for the first time she'd been holding her breath in life you know what does that feel like we're constantly on the go 
like we're just busy all the time. Sometimes we just need to stop and ask ourselves, what am I being busy with? You know, what is it? Is it important? Often people are coming because they're overwhelmed, they can't engage, they're depressed or they're anxious. Sometimes they're walking in the world but they're not connected to it. And when they feel disconnected is actually when the anxiety starts to build up. Sometimes I describe nature to people and they, they haven't heard what I'm hearing. And so there's a certain aspect to them that they realize I need some help around this. So there's something within themselves that they know this is not how it should be. I'm not settling, why is that? Doesn't matter if we go and listen to a meditation app, um, we'll only get a little short experience. We need to have some tools to help us offload what's going on here. We don't want to be relying on external apps or external devices that is going to deliver an experience for us. There's a place within us that we are at, totally at ease. We're not bound to anybody or anything. I don't need external validation. We, we have the ability to go there. And we know that if we're sitting down at the ocean and we close our eyes, that feels good. Often what's happening is because we're so overloaded, we can't get there naturally. Being at ease, the fulfillment, the joy, the intelligence, the creativity, is hard to access. We go out into the world we accumulate every day. We have something like 60,000 thoughts a day. And if we're not offloading that, then we're going into the new day with all of that as well. Once we sit in meditation for 20 minutes, we can offload. It creates space. It creates capacity to be in the world. The mind is how we experience life. But what happens is if, you, if it's overactive, and it doesn't have the ability to settle, then it can take us in lots of different directions. And mine is like the ocean. The top of the ocean is very turbulent. And then what happens is when you just quietly settle into the ocean, it becomes still, more still, more still. Mind has the ability to do that as well. I choose a particular mantra for each person, and that mantra has a vibration that meets the vibration of that person. So it allows the mind to settle and it dives within. And as the mind starts to settle like that, body and mind are connected, so body starts to settle. When that happens, then the body can offload. In that first session, you dive deeply straight away. I get people who come and they say, I can't keep still. And, um, you know, I can't shut off my mind. I said, don't worry about that. You know, just come and sit in the chair with me. And then, Afterwards, they're like, I can't believe I experienced that. Like, I can't believe that I could be so quiet and still, but it was already innately in them. They often say to me, how do I implement this? You know, how do I take it out into the world? And I often talk about it as the setup and the cleanup. The setup is, how am I going to approach my day? I'm going to start with that absolute state, that absolute being that I've contacted in meditation. It infuses life with it. Otherwise, if we're just infusing the day with our thoughts and our busyness, then that's actually what we're gonna have. That's the experience we're gonna have. This is how we get to the end of the day. So many people come home from work and they're still in the work mind. They haven't completely shut off. And they're not present for their partners or their children or their family. We need to just close the door, transition, let go, clean up, and then we can be with our partners, be with our family, be with our children. They don't want what we can give them. They want what we can be with them. There's a beautiful Vedic quote, which goes by uh, Yoga Star Kuru Karmani, which means first establish yourself in being and then perform action. So that's why meditation is so important because we need to draw back within first before we can propel out into life.